Wow. Now that's what I'm talking about. For the 10th anniversary of Summoner's War, we just get to straight up choose an F5. That's crazy. I don't know if we've ever had an event that's this straightforward in terms of like payoff. And there are a lot of nat fives in the game. So today we're going to be talking about which one you should pick. This list is going to be predominantly focused on PVP environments, though occasionally I might just throw in a PVE monster just for the sake of conversation. The other thing is that this isn't necessarily a countdown type of video. You know your account way better than I do, and you know what slots you need to fill on your team, right? So ultimately, I trust you to choose whatever monster is best for your situation. Great, with that out of the way, let's get started. We're actually going by element today. So we're gonna start out with fire. Starting us off is Vanessa the Fire Valkyrie. She is the owner of a 33% speed lead, and to be totally honest, in a lot of situations, I could just stop the explanation there and she'd still be a valid choice. <laughs> but instead, the explanation continues. If we're talking about up and down careers in Summoner's War, Vanessa is definitely, she's definitely had one. All the way back when I started playing Summoner's War over seven years ago, Vanessa was not in a great spot. And now she is firmly planted as one of the best first picks that you can have in RTA right now. She offers a single target strip with defense break on skill two. She's got a revive on skill three that you don't even have to be the one to activate. And doesn't hurt that you have a chance to get an increased cooldown time on skill one. Next, it's Sekhmet, the Fire Desert Queen. Sekhmet is one of those monsters that can just make or break a game. And to be honest, like she should just be thankful that she's on the list at all because of all the times when she has forsaken me and she has missed that skill three. But dude, when she lands the skill three, it's her fault that I won. It's her fault when I win and it's her fault when I lose. She has an impeccable base speed and she also has the ability to put an opponent on full cooldown time. But what's really cool about her is that she can steal all the buffs on the target. And if she misses the reset, it doesn't go on cooldown and you can try again the next time she takes a turn. Also, Curse of the Beautiful is just like a goaded second skill. The amount of things that it does and it also scales really well with additionals, great monster. Next, one of the best counter picks in the game to this day, Juno the Fire Oracle. Juno is what we call a problem solving monster. You pick her when someone throws down a Shizuka or anything that either tries to apply a lot of debuffs on your team or apply a ton of buffs on the enemy team. In the former situation, she can cleanse all the debuffs off herself and heal your team proportionately. And in the latter, she can use her skill two to strip the enemy team and make it look like Trial of Ascension. Throw in turn cycling on skill one and you have just a banger monster. Number four out of five. Oh, I, I think I forgot to say that at the start. I'm gonna try to just make this five for each element, right? Clean 15, five for each, that sounds about right. Anyway, number four is Lucia, the Fire Pudding Princess. This might be the first time that I've actually talked about Lucia on this channel. She's what Stoic and I affectionately call Jackson at home. She increases the effectiveness of your healing abilities and she also reduces the effectiveness of the enemy's attack bar pushback. Her skills one and two are just there to keep the rest of your team alive. So while she's passively reducing the effectiveness of Oliver or Chung Pung or anything that's trying to reduce your attack bar, she's also keeping your team healthy. Five, the last slot for fire, kind of a cop out because I'm saying either Mei Ho Wang or Masha. Effectively, they kind of do similar things. Mei Ho Wang can't be controlled and Masha puts immunity on herself every turn, so it, it's at the very least, it's comparable. Mei Ho Wang is truly a force to be reckoned with these days. Not only can he not be controlled, but he also passively gains attack power and speed as time goes on. So that means as the game gets longer, he's going to be aging better and better. His effectiveness is going to skyrocket. Plus, the dude is a critting machine. Like, I, dude, I solo, I solo Moors and Camillas all day with this guy. And Masha, we've all seen how great Masha can be. She also has a defense break on skill two, and she just does a lot of damage. She also technically resists her own death, because the first time she would be taken down, she's instead dismounted and continues on as just a person without their pet. It's kind of sad. You cannot play that no. No, no, no. Let's talk about water monsters now. The first on the list is gonna be Shizuka, the water-owned Miyuji. I've talked about how effective Shizuka is at length on this channel. She even has her own monster spotlight. Essentially, in the background of a game, there's a pool of debuffs and buffs that are being observed by Shizuka. After she sees a buff or debuff in play, she can then apply it with her skill three. And she's gonna try to put all of them at once. All the debuffs on the enemy team and all the buffs on your team. Now that's an extremely strong effect, especially because it doesn't glance. Because you're not, you're not trying to hit them, you're just trying to put debuffs on them. She also has a slightly conditional revive on skill two, and she's got strip on skill one. 
incredible monster used to be even more broken than she is right now so i imagine she's going to be a lot of people's choice number two on the water list is Hegang the water art master Hegang's passive the art of blank space was recently represented in the elemental passives video that went on the channel and for good reason the dude is a stellar counterpick and i'm pretty sure he exists because of gianna and more's prevalence if your team would get stripped well they're still stripped but they get their attack bar boosted and they get a cleanse there is more on the passive, but essentially in a lot of situations, you're going to pick your Heigang to be anti-strip. And his skill too has 100% activation when it comes time to strip debuffs off the enemy team, unlike his brother Chungpunk. Funny order on this one, number three is more the Water Striker. Heigang is a counter to this guy. <laughs> At least on turn one, Moore is one of the most prevalent first picks in the game. He's got a 24% speed lead, he's got a strip on skill two, and his passive also makes it so that he's a difficult monster to deal with towards the end of the game. There's a lot of situations where Moore can kind of come in clutch and solo. Next is Miles, who also had his passive featured on the best elemental passives video. This thing is crazy. It increases his speed based on the number of buffs in play, and then he ignores a portion of the enemy's defense in proportion to the amount of speed that he has. So this ends up looking like a monster that is ruined entirely on speed and HP, and he's able to dish out crazy amounts of damage even off element. Like, you can frequently see this guy hit a wind monster for upwards of 8k, 11k. This is a great unit. He also has a single target strip and stun on skill 2, so he can open the game for you and he can close it out. Before we reveal the last one on the monster list, I did just want to shout out a couple monsters that are good in other areas of the game that are up there for your consideration. The first is Liam, the water weapon master, who's gotten a lot of attention on speed dungeon teams as of late, and it's totally deserved. He's got a really cool third skill that does different things depending on how many monsters are in play on the enemy team. And if there are three or fewer enemies, it's a single target damage attack. And that means that bosses automatically fill that condition. The other one that I wanted to shout out is Manon the Water Macaron Guard, because even though her effectiveness in RTA has kind of fallen off a little bit, she's really good in arena still. So if you just need that one monster for your arena defense and you care about making it so annoying that nobody wants to attack you, she may be the one to fill in that slot. She has a 15% chance to parry incoming damage. So that means that the monster that was going to be dealt damage is going to receive zero and she'll counterattack. Granted, it doesn't work when you attack her, but that's fine. You can always run her with things like a Jingjie or a Molly that make it difficult to attack any monster in particular. The last water monster we're going to talk about is Jongnam, the Water Dokebi Lord. This guy has been picked all over the place. Legend tournaments, America's Summit, high level RTA. The dude is kind of crazy. Check this out. Skill 1, he's got a freeze. Skill 2, he has true damage with a strip. And skill 3, he's got a heal for himself and an AoE freeze. Plus, he can cycle attack bar. It's a, it is a wild kit. The dude is really stacked, actually. It's a very fun water monster. We're going on to win now, and the first one we're going to talk about is Chungpung, whose name has actually come up a couple times on this video already. By this point, you should be a little bit familiar with what Chungpung does. He is strip and follow up which is really important sometimes. One of my biggest complaints with starting units is that they oftentimes don't have a lot of relevance after that first turn. Yeah, Chungpung's not like that. Chungpung can set up that defense break and strip your opponents on turn one. He could potentially proc and then AOE attack bar reduction into increased cooldown time. There's a reason why he is still picked in RTA to the state. He's been a menace for seasons on seasons on seasons. Next, Leo, the Wind Dragon Knight. Nobody does what Leo does. Literally, he is the only one in the game that has this unique of a passive. Leo caps everyone's speed to his own. Now, why that's incredible is that it absolutely destroys speed scaling units. We've already talked about one monster who is severely hurt by Leo, and it's Miles, the Water Sky Surfer. You can also pick a Leo in response if you see that someone's going for a turn one sniper cleave comp to just cut in and disrupt their strategy. He also has a chance to reduce attack bars whenever he attacks someone, and he's got torrent. So that means he can ignore defense torrent people. And that, that's pretty fun. Next is Cigar. Cigar's third skill actually was featured on the best elemental third skills video. And it's just like, the more I read this thing, the crazier it gets. It does so much. It strips, AOE attack bar reduces, tries to provoke, puts them on cooldown time. Dude, you can't do everything. Well, apparently he can. <laughs> and then he's got defense break and provoke on two different skills. Yeah, he's actually like low-key one of my most wanted monsters right now. <laughs> Next is Oliver the Wind Sky Surfer. 
what like there's no way that we could have this video without Oliver. He's another 33% speed lead option. And man, what he offers is so valuable. He has increased cooldown time effects on both his second and third skill. They also have a clause that says that if you successfully increase the cooldown time of your opponent, it will reduce the cooldown time of himself. And he tries to steal some of their attack bar. So if you use his third skill on someone who has full attack bar, he could just get an extra turn afterwards. And that is part of the reason why he is so infamous. And it's led to this feeling of Oliver taking all the turns in the world because he kind of does. Oh man. I can't decide. There are so many monsters that I could put for this last slot, like Chakra, the Wind Indra, who's got AoE speed scaling damage. There's Layla, who's come into a lot of attention recently. There's Ciara, who's like all of a sudden come back into the meta with her 24% speed lead and Dot on skill two. That was a joke because she's got a bomb, but she never lands it. Then there's Etna, who's one of my favorite starters in the game. But I think I'm gonna make it Smicer. At the start of every single one of Smicer's turns, he's gonna try to strip somebody, reduce their attack bar, and silence them. <laughs> That's a lot. It's pretty good. His skill two is a bomb with a stun. So they're stunned for one turn, and then when the bomb goes off, they have a chance to get stunned again. Plus he has like a weirdly effective heal on skill one. Man, I didn't even talk about Gyo or Sonya. There are so many good choices for this. There we go, that's the list for each element in the game, and hopefully gives you a little bit more insight as to why you would choose each one of these monsters. If you need a speed lead option, you can always choose Vanessa, Oliver, more. If you need a strip, you can choose Chungpong, Heigang, or more. If you need a great starter for your team, you could pick something like Sekhmet or Cigar. Or if you need a damage dealer, you could pick Mei Wang, Masha, Miles, etc. <laughs> Or if you need counter picks, you could pick something like Juno, Lucia, or Heigang. Or Leo, because Leo stops a lot, <laughs> to be honest.